Hi and welcome to All Things Marvelous. I'm John Paul and today we are diving into one of the most stunning pieces of animation to grace our screens. This is Flow, an indie animated film from Latvia that just pulled off the impossible, winning an Oscar. And it was made entirely in Blender. So let's get into it. Flow is the latest film from the brilliant Gintz Zibelotis, a filmmaker who's been redefining what independent animation can be. It's a dialogue-free adventure following a lone cat navigating a vast, flooded world. Along the way, it meets a Labrador, a Capybara, a Lima, and a Secretary Bird, which is quite the team of unlikely friendships. Together they float through the watery wasteland, dodging dangers and surviving in a world where humans are nowhere to be seen. But to be honest, I'm not even sure if it's Earth, as there are some creatures that turn up later that are definitely not on this planet. That name may sound familiar. Gintz made waves with his 2019 film Away, which was a one-man production. But this time for Flo, he teamed up with a full crew, spanning across France, Belgium and Latvia, working in three different studios. The team had a budget of about 3.5 million euros, which may sound a lot, but compared to Pixar or DreamWorks budgets, that's hardly anything. Unlike the Pixar and DreamWorks of the world, Flow wasn't made using million dollar propriety software like Moonray or Renderman and Presto. This film was built entirely in Blender, and that's a massive deal for indie animation. Blender isn't just a cheap alternative anymore. It's becoming a legitimate powerhouse for serious filmmaking, and Flo just proved that, I think, in the best way possible. A quote from Gintz said, Blender allowed us to iterate fast. The real-time rendering meant we could see results immediately and make adjustments on the fly. It was indispensable for a film like this. In other words, it let them work without the need for a billion dollar budget. They used Eevee, which helped them do away with the need for storyboards, as they just used animatics to block out the scenes and then fill in the models and backgrounds as they made and refined them. Hearing this did remind me of a story about some trouble another film ran into when rendering previs shots. For the film Cats, Director Tom Hooper didn't properly understand the VFX process and failed to appreciate that early renders of the characters were just that, incomplete sketches without the proper lighting, textures or colours. He was demanding all rough previs to be fully rendered and you can imagine with all that hair the VFX studio just couldn't cope with the changes. When Mill Film failed to deliver, its sister company MPC had a take on a major chunk of the project and just made the costs and time spiral out of control. In fact, just recently MPC, which is a subsidiary of Technicolor, has just been made to close unfortunately. The whole Technicolor group, which was responsible for VFX in films like Dune, The Lion King, The Life of Pi and many more, has collapsed impacting hundreds of people's jobs in the UK, US and India, which is really upsetting news and a bit of a wake up call in the industry. Back to Flow though, it wasn't just about looking pretty, it needed to feel real too. The team went deep on animal behavior and observing and studying how real cats, dogs and capybaras move, react and emote. This gave an animation that feels alive, natural and totally immersive. They didn't even use normal compositing techniques and decided to do it all in box so to speak, doing things at a shader level inside Blender so they could see the results straight away and render them out from there, which is pretty cool and saves a lot of time. Since the film has zero dialogue, the sound design needed to do some heavy lifting. Every rustling leaf, every ripple in the water, it all had to tell a story. And here's a fun fact, the capybara's vocal sounds, not actually a capybara, the team used recordings of a baby camel. They chose this because they found it had a perfect mix of softness and curiosity. They also used an asthmatic sounding tiger pitched really far down for the breathing of the whale-like creature. With the score, Zibelotis himself, along with Ricard Zalupe, crafted an eerie atmospheric soundtrack using electronic elements blended with organic sounds. You can hear marimbas, brass, and deep humming synths, all perfectly mirroring the ebb and flow of the dreamlike world. The film has garnered quite a lot of recognition. It made its grand debut at Cannes, instantly getting attention for its unique storytelling. From there, it continued to build momentum, festival after festival, and then won the ultimate accolade, an Oscar. The film beat out industry giants to win Best Animated Feature, which makes Flo the first ever Latvian film to win an Oscar and the first fully Blender animated feature to take home the gold. 
So what does this mean for animation? Well, a lot I think. It proves that you don't need a Hollywood sized budget to make something breathtaking. That open source tools like Blender aren't just alternatives and most importantly it reminds us that visual storytelling can be just as powerful, maybe even more powerful, when words are left behind. So if you haven't seen Flow yet, please go and check it out. Seriously, it's great. And as always, if you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell because I've got plenty more stories coming your way. Bye for now and I'll see you on the next video.